G with Verge TV, and I'm here with Maurice Tomlinson, Jamaican LGBTQ advocate. He just uh, put on Montego Bay Pride yesterday. We're here in Montego Bay, Jamaica. Hey, Maurice, how are you doing? Hey, I'm great. Yeah, how do you feel after yesterday's event? Oh, I'm exhausted to begin with, but I'm also very elated at some of the responses we've seen. Wonderful. Um, some young people have really said this has given them an opportunity to be themselves for the first time, and one fellow said he's going to come out with his father, and that wow. is a little scary, but at the same time liberating. Wonderful, wonderful. I, I think it's great. Well, this was my first uh, LGBTQ event in Jamaica, and um, it was incredible, incredible for me to see like how free and everybody felt in that space, but it was also to hear how important it was for security and secrecy in terms of for people's safety. So that was something very different yes. um, for me. But I'm glad that you uh, you created that space, and that was wonderful. And what what was the impetus for you doing Montego Bay Pride? Well, the real impetus for Montego Bay Pride was after Jamaica Pride was held last year. There were some persons who were not able to make it. Okay. And because it's mostly held in Kingston, okay. and I felt they deserved an opportunity to have their own pride. Okay. So we created Montego Bay Pride to basically give them a space. That's yeah. great. I mean, the seeing um, so many people, especially I saw a lot of men who got to express themselves more in a feminine way. Right. That I know in Jamaica, it's not they, they, they would have to hide that. Yes. So yes. I saw a lot of like flamboyants, and I felt really happy for them. That I felt happy for everybody, but especially yeah. the men who could be like they want to be trans women or right. whatever they, they want to refer to themselves but they could express themselves so right. that was beautiful yes yes it, it, it is very important to give people the opportunity to be themselves at right. least one day a year yes it's suffocating yeah. in the society having to police yourself all the time all i can tell time. you I'm considered too effeminate because oh. I don't have a deep enough voice oh, wow. and I don't dress in a traditionally macho way when I'm going out. Oh, so okay. you know, I know what that's like. I remember when I worked at the National Airline Air Jamaica. Oh, you worked for Air Jamaica? Yes, my Air boss um, at the time was a flight attendant. My boss told me that passengers were complaining that I am gay. And so oh. her recommendation was that I should stand in front of a mirror, deepen my voice, and try to act more macho. Wow. And uh, I've noticed on Air Jamaica, the flight attendants, the male flight attendants, are little or no longer Air Jamaica, Caribbean, Caribbean, yeah, Caribbean yes. carriers. I've always been a little more uber masculine. Oh, you know, it's like they're okay. putting on, and right. I felt they're not allowed to be themselves because right. the Jamaican society won't allow that. So Jamaica has a long way to go. What do you think are some of the things that need to take place for Jamaica to have change? The reality is, unless there's greater visibility of LGBTI community members, the society will not change or change very slowly because people fear what they don't know. Exactly. And I use my own father as an example. My father is a Pentecostal, tried and true, you know, <laughs> Bible thumper. After I spent some time with my husband and I in upstate New York where my husband preached mm -hmm. and uh, elsewhere, he began to realize that my husband is just as religious as he is and we are a rather boring couple <laughs> in our very traditional ways. And so that got rid of a lot of the fear that he had been exposed to right. and taught by his evangelical church. Mm -hmm. And now my father drives the pride bus. I saw that. Yeah, That's you know. Amazing. <laughs> And Thank you, helps. Mr. Tomlinson. That was amazing. That was amazing. <laughs> and he helps me scout for pride locations. He was wonderful. the one who actually found that very secure place. That's wonderful. And, you know, we're in dialogue with the gentleman who owns the space. And he said, no, you didn't have a problem. The staff that were there, they were more intrigued than anything else. Mm -hmm. Again, we had fishermen drive, um, you know, boating pass, I suppose. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we they stopped, that. they mm -hmm. looked. You know, people were just curious, and as long as they realized we are not a threat, because mm -hmm. they were told we are a threat by their pastors, their priests, once they can disabuse themselves of that myth by actually right. getting to know us, then the society will just let live and let live. But the hard part is, okay, so I live in, in the United States, I can be very visible, and I am, but then I feel like no one's really threatening my safety. Right. Here in Jamaica, someone being visible could be deadly. Right. And so this is why we do these kinds of... Um, visibility campaigns like yeah. Pride. Mm -hmm. We also do the pop-up protests right. to build the confidence of persons so that they'll feel that they can do this safely and give them strategies. We do, we do discuss strategies of how to do this safely. Mm -hmm. For example, one of the major issues for some of our young trans individuals is how do they come out to their families? Mm -hmm. You know, um, Young gay boys, how do they come out to their families? Right. And we help them to say, look, First, you have to be their son or their daughter in the way that they know you to be anyway, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And once you work through that, we also provide 
support in terms of mentors or persons to talk to to, mm. to give you advice right and we also encourage you know walking in groups okay, because good. there is definitely strength in numbers so at our pride we didn't have armed security mm -hmm. we had what is called structural security because there's a lot of us yes, yes, I saw that. <laughs> the location wasn't visible on social media you had to be registered and then you were told where to meet offside right <laughs> You know, and then you're trusted. So that gives people confidence that there are ways to protect yourself. Right. And then if we do it often enough, just little steps, if we do it often enough, then it will reduce the level of um, hostility right. towards LGBT people. Well, one of the things I saw yesterday that I really uh, liked, I met two young women who were allies. Right. One asked me if I felt she was in the LGBT community, and I said, yeah, because right. you're here. And right. she said, no. I am not, but I feel there's nothing wrong with being gay, right. so I want to come. And I was like, we need a lot more of that exactly. in Jamaica to make a big difference. Because yes. it's one thing when I, I'm gay, but I say, hey, it's okay to be gay, but then when someone who is not says it, then it's more, it can be very powerful. Yes, so yes, yes. we need to work on building allies in Jamaica. Do you know anything about in terms of how is that working in Jamaica and getting yeah. allies? Right. So there's a lot of work going on, especially with civil society, to work with parents, mm -hmm. you know, who are also very important in the lives of LGBTI people. Working with religious leaders, we have some very good allies in the religious um, faith community. Nice. Um, you know, Father Sean Major Campbell, I always sing his praises. The, mm -hmm. Anglican priest in Kingston who washed the feet of lesbians and world human, yes. world human rights in 2014, you know, in his church. Mm -hmm. And it created quite a bit of a firestorm initially mm -hmm. in the media, but then his congregation has now come along and he has allowed us to use his space to have public discussions like the discussion which was held prior to Pride mm -hmm. in Kingston, um, on the Friday before Pride, on the Bogrin on the church. Mm -hmm. And to a person in the room, you know, nobody felt that the Bogri law made sense. Right, right, right. You know, so it's these kinds of work we're doing. Um, we're working with um, people like Usain Bolt, sports stars like that. Good. We're also working with musicians. We yeah. have had Diana King, who's a lesbian, come on, but we've also Wonderful. had great other musicians. Wonderful. You know, um, who have been who have expressed their support. Great. So we're, we're working individual. We're politicians. Okay, you know, so important. Yeah. Uh, you know, the mayor of Kingston, okay, great. Um, Angela Brownberg, she spoke at Jamaica Pride okay. as, the, as the first ever Jamaica Pride as the keynote speaker. Wonderful. <laughs> you know, that's yes. a very powerful statement. Wonderful. And so uh, her doing these things, and she said, and the mayor of all Kingstonians, mm -hmm. her doing these things and others um, similarly following along, you know, as straight allies, is helping to, as I said, disabuse people of the myth that we're all freaks, we're all here to destroy right. Jamaican society. We just want to live and yes. allow to express our love um, with another consenting adult in a way that doesn't threaten anybody's um, exactly. <laughs> you know, anything. Right, right. exactly, that's mm -hmm. great. Well, thank you so much for all your work. I came, I'm going to tell you, I came to the Montague Bay Pride because you messaged me in Facebook. <laughs> thank God for Facebook. But um, that made a big difference for me to decide to come. Right. And it was just really, my, like I said, my first experience being in a gay community here and just seeing how much work you're doing and how much pride people have and how much more work is needed. So really appreciate it. And thanks for joining me here and uh, Queer Conversations, Virgie TV and MG, and this is Maurice Tomlinson. Thank you. Thank you.